So this is the next phase of what I've been trying to achieve with this particular shot. Um, so far we've managed to clone and composite various things out um, and then tidy it up, apply this crop um, and then apply this uh, night for day look. Um, that I was looking at um, working into the image. Now, as I said in the previous video, What's happened here though is that with the um, with the night for day look it's burned out any of the details of the lights so for instance the light clusters um, along the brake lights here at the, the top of the window here in the Fiat um, also the brake lights that would appear in the uh, the left and right rear brake lights or tail lights um, actually in the normal shot you really could not see much in these uh, rear lights although this top um, window brake light did light up quite quite a lot. Um, so, in order to um, put some lights back in, there's a, there's a couple of things that we need to do. For, I mean, first of all, there is actually some detail in this in this in this light cluster here at the top. Um, so I'd like to expose that so it actually comes through. So, again, going back to the rotoscoping technique which I used here for to get rid of this door and make sure the wing mirror went over. I want to essentially punch through where the where the effect is being applied this night and day and allow to see the, the light cluster um, a lot along the motion so essentially you need to punch a hole and it has to track all the way through um, where the car moves which you'll see in a bit but essentially um, I've already done the, the rotoscoping so I'll just enable it and you'll see immediately it punches through it doesn't look very good though or convincing um, it looks like it almost looks like a Cylon actually. Um, so really what I want to do is apply some kind of glow um, sort of light streaming effect on, on this cluster of lights as well as overlay some uh, light uh, sort of uh, effects over these rear, rear clusters as well um, which I had absolutely no idea how to do so I was playing around with some of the uh, effects settings um, and in, in the effects there is um, one uh, called um, CC light rays um, and that's that's what I've actually used as the basis uh, of, of this effect anyway so first things first once you've got the light rays on there they don't follow the lights of the moving car so what you need to do is you need to apply uh, motion tracking um, to this scene so then we can apply the lights and the lights will follow um, the actual motion of the vehicle so onto the motion tracking which is the first time we've done here before um, let me just find the right scene I think it will be uh, backlight there we are so that, that opens up the original scene and uh, you can see a very small uh, tracking point there which I will try to zoom into uh, you can see essentially where the light moves it should follow where the cluster of lights are it's only for a very short amount of time this scene um, but it's enough that again it, it, it's this trying to make it more convincing than it already is um, and then going back to um, our other light clusters I've applied another tracker on cluster 2 as you can see um, that moves up there as the, as, again as the as the car moves the, it follows the light cluster um, and also we have one applied for tracker 3 and because the car is moving away and slightly left to right it is three dimensional so it's not as easy as just picking one point on the entire scene and motion tracking one point and hoping it all stays together it just doesn't work quite like that and apologies if you can hear a buzzing noise in the background it's my freezer anyway ignore that um, so uh, now that the tracking points have been laid down one of the techniques is to apply what we call this null tracker. Now I'm not entirely sure what these are exactly for because I'm brand new to After Effects. Um, so if we go back to, in fact, if we just go back to the original scene, which has had the night for day and it's got this punch through, I'll then show the the trackers that we've got here. These null trackers that I was on about. Essentially, these are invisible layers which you apply um, motion tracking information to and then you can use these motion tracking layers, these null objects as parent items of effects that you can apply. So for instance I could apply effects 
which will then copy the motion tracking information from these um, null objects and should move. Took me quite a while to figure this out um, again because I'm br brand new um, to this. So if if I go and apply um, this CC light rays which I uh, applied here, um, we can. So you can see instantly by turning that on, that actually it does actually give that light cluster an element of credibility um, because otherwise it, it would it just looks like I say a very bland light. And I've also applied one to the left cluster and the right cluster. Now the left and right clusters they look more convincing, but I'm not 100%. I'm about 95% convinced in terms of how real they look. Um, but in terms of again being a novice and picking this up, um, if I had a lot more time and someone was actually paying me to do this, obviously I could spend more time doing this. Um, so, as I said, this motion tracking information has been applied, um, and they are actually linked. I'm, I'm going to quickly try and show you where the bright, the, the right bright light. So you can see here where we've got the center value. And there's this expression center. It's all quite complicated, and I don't fully understand it myself yet. But I've used this little icon here, which is called the pick whip, which has linked this particular object, or at least this light cluster here, down to I believe it's going to be yes, this null tracker two. And you'll see there's this position here, and that position changes over time based on where the actual um, tracking has gone, and then with that, you have to wait. It's quite quite CPU intensive. So the the, the red square here, the the null object, will follow where the motion tracking is, and then I've essentially made a relationship between the center of this light effect down to the position of the motion tracking. So therefore, when the scene moves, again it's CPU intensive, so it, it's quite slow to update but essentially the vehicle will move and the light effect will follow the motion tracking information and again when, when you actually get to see this in real time it's very unlikely that we're going to have time to wait around for it to cache all of these images but it does actually work well and looks quite convincing. So from there, I say we did the bright lights, and I'm quite happy with that scene now. Um, we've got bright lights; it does look more like a nighttime image with those with those um, light effects on there. So I then went to one of the earlier scenes that I shot, which was um, available in my other video. Uh, this one works a little bit quicker because it's not got any of the cloning in. And as you see again, the car comes into the drive, and it looks a little bit poor because it's not got any of the light clusters on. Uh, as I mentioned before the lights are actually on because the Fiat actually leaves its uh, driving lights on all day long um, which is a bit annoying but it doesn't come through. So what we what I did again is we went to um, uh, the, the motion tracking and we track these points against the lights all the way along until it disappears off shot so you see it's quite a long motion track. And it's quite easy to apply the motion track um, it needs a little bit of help in places, but mostly um, it gets it right um, with a say with a little bit of assistance. So here we go, the light comes around, and you see the tracking point is always staying with there. So that means I can then do what I did before, which was to apply the um, these uh, say these null, oh, not the lock, the eye, please. I apply these null objects, which take the tracking information and follow the light cluster all the way around. Neat. So we make a relationship between the left headlight and the right headlight to so these um, null objects, which I'll, I'll now make disappear because I want to see the lights. Now again, it's the simple light effect that I use, these CC light rays, you are able to um, change, so let's go into here, see the CC light rays. You can change the colours of them, um, the shapes of them, the radius, this is of the well, radius, radii of them, um, and what I've actually done in this effect is because obviously the, the vehicle's quite far away is that you'll, you'll see there's some keyframes here, these little dots here which basically changes the um, the intensity and the radius of the actual 
lights to come around so the lights will actually grow get stronger and fade and it actually works quite well um, which I was quite surprised with um, because I thought it, it was going to require a more exp expensive or maybe not included effect and we see the vehicle comes around it may go slightly lower quality but it does look like there's some kind of glare and, and lens flare as the vehicle comes around um, and the radius is changing so at, at this point in time here the intensity and the radius is more or less at its maximum um, as you can see by the values down here uh, and as the vehicle actually goes to the right we then try and lower the intensity but keep the radius just so it looks like it's disappearing off camera now again it's far from perfect if you was to look at this frame by frame pixel by pixel but in terms of what I've been able to do with what I've learned very quickly it's actually quite nice. I, what I do like about it is the way that it actually glows up the whole scene as it comes in and the intensity increases. It's, uh, it's, it's quite, quite a nice effect. And again, so with a combination of motion tracking and effects and linking those effects to the motion tracking data, we've been able to come up with a quite a nice scene um, that, that works quite well. Um, so that concludes that. I've probably been going on quite a while again. Um, and in the next episode, well, episode, just next video, um, I'm going to be looking at adding some special effects so that this is when, you know, the actual cheesy stuff starts to really come out as opposed to some of the normal filmic stuff. Um, just playing around, trying to uh, learn After Effects. So uh, thanks if you have watched this and you've got this far with me. Thank you.